geometry or proven equations to work for it, where you have the sine of some angle is always equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, cosine of some angle is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, tangent is equal to the opposite divided by the adjacent. Now, that brings up the feel that we need to label our triangle slightly different than with the Pythagorean theorem. We base it off of that we have 190 degree angle. Again, you can only use this relationship with a right triangle. Depending on which angle I am looking for or that I know will define my opposite and adjacent sides. The hypotenuse will always be the longest side, both situations. Now, if I know this angle or I'm looking for this angle, then my legs are no longer labeled A and B. This one would be adjacent because this side is adjacent to the angle, right here. This side would be opposite because it is opposite the angle. If I'm looking for the only other angle down here, notice that the adjacent has been flipped because this side is adjacent, this side is opposite. Are we all kind of good with that? Now, when do I use trig? When I know, have one side or one angle on one side, and I <coughs> solve for it again. There are three terms in every equation. You have to know two to solve for the third. You may have to repeat the equation to solve for everything in here. Keep in mind that you don't need all three angles. If I'm looking for just angles in here, how many angles, how many degrees of angle does every triangle have? Sum. Interior, I guess I should say. The interior sum of all the angles of a triangle have to equal 180 degrees. You already know one of them because you deal with the right triangle. So for any other one, then I take three, 180 minus the other two, right? Any questions on how to use this cheat sheet? Any questions on how to use these equations? Yes? So, like on the first triangle there, mm -hmm. when we're looking, when we're trying to find that angle, we can use, um, let's see, opposite over adjacent or adjacent over hypotenuse to find it. We can use either one. No? It depends on what information you know about it. Okay. okay, so if I come in here and I say, you know what, I know this and I know this and I'm looking for this. I went through a little process for you to determine which equation will get you that. Okay, what I do is I come over here, I write these out on a piece of paper and then I come in and say, well, you know what, I know the angle here, I know the angle here, I know the angle here, right? All of that I know because I'm given the angle. Now, I also know the hypotenuse. So I'll come in here and say, I know that, and I know that. Then I go and say, what am I looking for? I'm looking for the adjacent side. I'm looking for that and that. Almost always, you're going to have at least one of these equations where all the terms are accounted for. In this instance, it's this one right here, right? I'm using cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, that changes, though, Declan, I think for what you're asking, what if I know this and this, and I want to solve for that? Okay, then again, I come into this thing and I look at, oh, I know opposite there and there, right? I know that term in all those <coughs> equations. I know the hypotenuse. I know that. I know that. Now what am I looking for? I'm looking for the angle, which I, is all of this. Which one has all three terms accounted for? I'm using this equation right here. And I can solve for that information in one step. Does that kind of bring this up? So you don't know which one you're using. It's based on the information you have available to you. And that will tell you which equation to use. Did that answer your question, or do, you, do we need to dive into this a different way? I, yeah, I think it, I think it answers it. Okay, think you're okay? Yeah. And then one more. When you have like an, uh, the angle, if it gives you the angle, and it, it was like 
86.9 or whatever, do you do, when you put it into one of those equations, do you do 0 0.869 all the time? Do you move this one every time to the front? No matter what you're given, I'd like you to work to two decimal places in this room unless you're told different. So this would be 86.90. Okay. Or the way calculators work, 86.9, because it assumes everything after that is a zero. Now, if that was 86.93923, whatever, you can round it to two, and you're going to be correct for the purposes of this class. Okay. Keep in mind that for one thing, let's say I'm using the tangent equation on this, and I write tangent of 86.9. This is one number. You do not have to keep it in this format as you go through your math. You can go ahead and crunch this right now. And in fact, go ahead and punch it into your calculator. Do 86.9 tangent, or in yours, tangent 86.9. You're going to get a number. 18.46. Okay, so that's 18.46, I think you said? Yeah. Now that's still equal to the opposite <coughs> over adjacent. These are both numbers. Now, I've gotten rid of this tangent function that's new to me, because it's a number. And I can just do the numbers now, if you wish. Okay, you don't have to keep it tangent. If you know the angle, that's just a number. Okay, and you can reduce it to a number at any point. Whatever it gives you on your calculator, I would like you to stay at least to two decimal points. Are we good on that? Are there any other questions? Okay, well let's see how well you can use this sheet. As you know it's coming, so if you would, please close your book. All you need is a calculator and a pencil. Stop this at 50 up. So you'll have 10 minutes.
We put them in the wire basket when you're done.